the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have for today Saint, uh, the Feast of St. Matthias, the Apostle. Uh, he is the one who was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. Uh, this is recounted in Acts chapter 1. Uh, so a second-class feast, as are all the feasts of the Apostles, and the color is red, uh, as all the Apostles were martyrs. Bishop Confessor Doctor of the Church and has been called one of the most influential, uh, significant figures of the 11th century by church historians, as we will see. So a brief biography, he was born in the year 988 in Ravenna, Italy, uh, orphaned at an early age and raised first by one of his brothers who treated him uh, very roughly, had him feeding pigs, didn't even give him enough to eat. Uh, but then his other brother found out and took him in and gave him uh, a much better treatment and uh, also an education. Uh, his older brother's name, uh, so Peter's name was just Peter. His older brother's name was Damien. And so Peter uh, was so um, overcome with the kindness of his brother that he took his name um, as his own. So there we get, thence we get Peter Damien. So uh, young Peter Damien excelled in the studies of theology and canon law, and by the time he was 25, he was already a renowned teacher in his city of Ravenna. And uh, St. Peter remained a teacher for the next 22 years, and uh, he never married, and he didn't become a cleric or a priest either. Uh, so a single man, uh, but spent long hours in prayer, fasting, uh, observed strict discipline, um, and it wasn't until he was 47 years old that he decided to enter the religious life. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was around this time, either before or after, he was so zealous for sanctity uh, that his practices of penance, fasting, and uh, uh, vigils uh, damaged his health, and he developed a severe insomnia. Uh, so he actually it's a, he, he had to learn how to mitigate his uh, penitential practices. So we can see... Um, you know, the, the hardest and most severe accounts of penances are not always the most prudent. Prudence is the um, regulator of other virtues, and it is possible uh, to be too zealous, right? uh, too hard on ourselves. So, um, in any case, um, he became a monk uh, and a priest, and his, um, uh, the abbot of his monastery appointed him to give lectures to his fellow monks and the monks of a few fellow um, neighboring monasteries as well. And a few years later, he himself was chosen to succeed the abbot, and he founded five more and uh, succeeded in establishing uh, strict rules of fasting, penance, and vigils. However, uh, because of his own experience, he understood the limitations of human nature. And so they were, they were strict, but they weren't too strict. And furthermore, he introduced this idea of a siesta, uh, which is a short nap after lunch to make up for the lack of sleep during the night. So that apparently was so popular, uh, all of Italy adopted it and can use to do so today. Um, not the monks, the people. That's why you go to a shop in Italy in the middle of the afternoon and they're closed. Um, so the episcopacy, episcopacy at the time of St. Peter Damien was an absolute mess. Bishops and priests were living scandalous lives. There were bad bishops, weak bishops, bribed bishops, good bishops, homosexual bishops. Uh, even the Bishop of Rome himself was sometimes no exception. And St. Peter was greatly distressed at this scandal. And uh, this is where we enter into um, something uh, definitely of note of St. Peter Damien, and that is the book that he wrote on uh, the scandal of clerical homosexuality. And this is called the Book of Gomorrah, or in Latin, Libor Gomorianus. And that is an account of the dissolute lives of clergymen, their practice of the sin of sodomy, uh, their abuse of young boys, uh, called pederasty, and the, and the cover-up of such crimes by the hierarchy. Does that sound familiar? Uh, so uh, um, there is actually a book online, um, St. Peter Damien uh, in the Book of Gomorrah, it's called, uh, by Matthew Hoffman. He's a, a writer for um, LifeSite News, and I actually spent time with him in uh, Guadalajara uh, when I was a seminarian. He was helping out with Holy Week there. So anyways, but he has a book on uh, the Book of Gomorrah and St. Peter Damien, and I'm going to read a bit from it so we can kind of get a summary of what um, St. Peter Damien was writing about. And he says, Alas, it is shameful to speak of it. It is shameful to relate such a disgusting scandal to sacred ears. But if the doctor fears the virus of the plague, who will apply the cauterization? If he is nauseated by those whom he is to cure, who will lead sick souls back to the state of health? And he was extremely hard on uh, homosexual priests 
uh, but even harder on those who did nothing about it, the, the hierarchy. Um, he advocated uh, strict, uh, harsh penances, for, for especially for um, priests who abused uh, young boys, uh, like a complete laicization removal from the priesthood uh, consigned to a monastery, um, I think thrown in prison for three months, fed on bread and water, beaten with rods, and then finally, uh, ever afterwards, uh, never to be allowed around children again and to be watched uh, continually by two stout monks. Uh, that's that's the, the penalty for those who repent. Uh, those who are unrepentant uh, is the sentence of death. Uh, and that is not that is not inappropriate. Um, let's see. So in that uh, preface of the book, um, the Book of Gomorrah, uh, the, 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 you can find it on Amazon. It's somehow still on. Um, the account given in that book, part of the preface, says that the Book of Gomorrah offers a scathing analysis of the evil of sodomy while expressing compassion for those who have fallen into such vice and the possibility of their redemption by the aid of divine grace. It explains the devastating effects of the vice, both spiritually and uh, psychologically, and warns that such behavior, particularly among the clergy, will bring down the wrath of God. It also urges the permanent defrocking of clerics who are habituated to homosexual behavior and endorses the permanent confinement of those guilty of child sex abuse, as, as I explained. So that uh, book is available. And here's a, a, a little um, s um, something I took from was it Church Militant website. I found uh, something of what um, how Peter Damien criticizes those who do nothing about it. Uh, the, the quote from Peter Damien is, Listen, you do nothing superiors of clerics and priests. Listen, and even though you feel sure of yourselves, tremble at the thought that you are partners in the guilt of others. Those, I mean, who uh, wink at the sins of their subjects that need correction and who, by ill-considered silence, allow them license to sin. Listen, I say, and be shrewd enough to understand that all of you alike are deserving of death, that is, not only those who do such things, but also they who approve those who practice them. And that last part is from Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 32. St. Paul himself speaking of the sin of sodomy. So, uh, tremendous, um, uh, what would you say, uh, um, efforts by Peter Damien, and very clear, very direct words, um, both on the subject matter itself and to bishops, right, to those who are responsible. He did not mince his words. Uh, so Pope Leo IX uh, took the, that seriously. He, re he realized the problems, and he enacted measures to help curb such abuses. Um, and later on, uh, Pope Stephen IX also recognized Peter Damien's abilities, and in fact, did, didn't, didn't just listen to him, but enlisted his help. He called upon him to intervene in high-level church affairs, uh, disputes, resolutions, and eventually he made uh, Peter Damien a cardinal. And, of course, uh, um, Peter Damien uh, resisted this strenuously, but uh, accepted under obedience. So that's what he did. For the last 20 years of his life, he served in that capacity as a diplomat, uh, arbitrator, and um, he was already older at this point. This is getting into the um, oh, 11, um, 11 uh, no, 1070. So he's, he's in, in his 70s by the time he dies. And in fact, uh, uh, he died on a mission. He caught a fever uh, uh, coming back from, it was resolving a dispute with King Henry IV, uh, King of Germany. Uh, he died on February 22nd, which is the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. Uh, so, um, uh, and then his feast is moved the following day, the 23rd, uh, which was yesterday. And as I said before, right, the day, the day on which a saint dies is not insignificant. And the fact that Peter Damien died on the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter, which we just heard from yesterday, if we remember our, our, the sermon, it's all about the authority Christ gave to the church. And despite the fact that the church can be full of corruption, bishops, priests, popes can be absolutely corrupt, even heretics, and yet the church will not fail because of the promise God gave to Peter. What a fitting day for St. Peter Damien to die on the feast, uh, uh, that, that very feast. Chair of St. Peter, uh, he upheld the... Um, uh, we would say the role of the church. People look back at all the scandals in the church, uh, both the church now and in the past. This has happened before. Homosexuality has been rife before. The Pope was homosexual. I don't remember. It was on um, the scandalous life of, um, oh, it was a Pope around that time. He himself practiced this um, uh, behavior. Uh, this is proof of the infallibility of the church. Peter Damien, uh, while he would attack uh, the practices and he would uh, uh, excoriate those guilty and those who looked the other way, he also upheld the validity of their sacraments. Uh, he recognized, you know, th this is the principle and the power of the church, the authority of the church comes from Christ, even though the men who exercise it are themselves completely unworthy, uh, uh, scandalous uh, devils uh, in, in the guise of men. 
So you, you, th that, I would say, is, you could say, both, both the proof of the church's authenticity, but also the reasonableness of, of the men in the church who are able to see both sides. As as Peter Damien wrote in his um, preface, like it's an absolutely disgusting, it's offensive even to think about, but yet we have to look at this and face it if we're going to solve it. And if we want not just the condemnation of these men, but their redemption, right, that, that, to, to turning them around. So um, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful example uh, from St. Peter Damien, as I mentioned, uh, uh, bishop, confessor, doctor of the church. Uh, and this uh, priest, bishops, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost.